Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for, praise God, another opportunity the Lord has given me. Praise God to come and share the word of God with you on this, praise God, on this uh, Wednesday, praise God, 6th day of March, 2024. And once again, I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama, once again, declaring unto you that Jesus Christ, he is the answer. He is the only answer to the problems that we face today. And uh, praise God, uh, we're going to need him as we, praise God, as time progress, because uh, I would not like to be barrel of bad news, but um, things are not going to get any better. They'll get worse before they get better. And better is when the Lord come back again. Praise God. But he is the answer. Christ is the answer. He's the answer to, praise God, every problem that we're facing today. We have only to put our trust in him, to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, and thou shalt be saved. And I am a witness that God is not only willing, but God is able. He's able to save. He's able to deliver us. Praise God, he's able to do abundantly above all that we ever could conceive in our heart and mind if we would only put our trust in him. Praise God. But now I hope on this Wednesday, on this Wednesday, generally what we usually call Bible study night in most of our churches, traditionally speaking, that is. I uh, hope you're ready to study God's word with me. And I would encourage you to look again to the book of Philippians, Paul's letter to the Philippians, praise God, and keep in mind he's sitting in a jailhouse at this time. He's, praise God, probably in shackles and, uh, praise God, probably existing in deplorable conditions at this particular time. But yet and still he has a heart and a mind to encourage the believers, those whom God has used him to bring to Christ. Philippians 3 and we're going to look at verse 10, just that one verse again, verse 10. And as always, I do encourage you to go back and praise God. To, and uh, this is going to be part two in this particular uh, series concerning this particular verse here. I encourage you to write down the scriptures and praise God to get your tablets, your pencil, your paper. And praise God, follow me, write down the word here, word, the scripture God gives me, and then go back later on and praise God, just kind of look through them in a little bit more in detail. And, and I, I do believe, I do believe God honors uh, our efforts, our diligence when we, praise God, show interest in his word enough to uh, look back at the scriptures and to allow the Holy Spirit to teach and uh, give you a word specifically just for you. Praise God for you. Tell him, hey, just for your situation, what you're going through right now, God's word is able to do that. Praise God. Philippians 3 and 10. And once again, it reads, uh, Paul says here that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable, he says here, to his, meaning Christ, to his death, that I may know him. That's his desire. Even in, in shackles, in prison, he still wants to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. Let us pray. Father, bless you. Lord, I thank you for once again on this, praise God, on this Wednesday afternoon, giving me an opportunity, Lord, once again, to come and share your word. Lord, I realize that it's not by might, not by power. It's not by my eloquence, Lord, but it's by your spirit that this great work will be accomplished. Now, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that I might decrease and you, Lord, might increase at this very moment. You might get all the glory, the honor, and Lord, that you might speak through this vessel that you have called to teach and to preach your word. I pray, Father God, the light from heaven might shine upon the darkness of the, of the hearts that may hear this word today. And Lord, I pray that their lights will come forth and Lord, the darkness will be dispelled. I ask it all, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. Praise God, that I might know him, Paul says, that I might know him, my desire is to know him, and the power of his resurrection. Then that's our subject once again, knowing Christ, knowing Christ in the power of his resurrection. Knowing Christ now, praise God, in that power, 
that come forth as a result of his resurrection. And this is part two on this particular uh, segment of this verse. We done a part, uh, well, we didn't do a part one, but we just kind of dealt, first of all, with the same verse, but we dealt with the uh, knowing Christ in the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, we dealt with that on, I think, last Wednesday, I believe it was. And then we come to that first part, uh, uh, knowing him in the power of resurrection. And on Sunday, we done a part one. And now we going to do a part two. And very possibly, because this is such a powerful, powerful subject here, possibly a, a part three. Amen. Praise God. But now, knowing Christ uh, in his resurrection, in the power of his resurrection, this was Paul's desire. And it should be our desire also. Amen. He's concerned. Paul is concerned about, praise God, the power that comes out of Christ's resurrection. This is his main concern now. And, and, and while he's sitting there in uh, a dungeon, probably a dark dungeon, uh, praise God, infested with rats and whatever, and he's in chains and shackles, but yet, praise God, he has a desire to know more about Christ and the power of his resurrection. And it's of that power, that power now, is of that power that he desired to know about, not only to know about, more about, but to experience. He wanted to experience that power in his life. And also that was his desire for the believers also that we might experience the power of his resurrection in our own life. Huh? Praise God, which would enable, praise God, us in, 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 in knowing that power would, as a teacher, in Paul's position, as a preacher and a teacher, if he could know more of this power of his resurrection, then, praise God, it would enable him to teach the new believers, yes, how to live a victorious Christian life in Christ. Praise God. And this is what his concern here. I think he knew, and I know he knew, that his time uh, of departure was very near. Uh, he was on his way out, but now he was concerned that the brethren would get a hold to this great knowledge because it would be, praise God, it would be very important because in times of trials and tribulation, knowledge is power. Knowledge would help us to stand, praise God, and when we're not all, praise God, to still stand when we know the knowledge of the power of his resurrection. So Paul, uh, he wanted to be able to communicate this, uh, 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 this power and uh, uh, what comes out of this power of his resurrection. He wanted to be able to communicate this to the new believers, amen. He wanted to, uh, to know how Christ's resurrection is more or less a verification. And it is a verification of his Messiahship, praise God, that the Bible throughout the Old Testament had uh, foretold of the Messiah that would come. So Paul wanted to know how Christ's resurrection uh, would verify, uh, could verify his uh, Messiahship. And also about Christ's coming to the earth uh, as the Son of God. Praise God, how he came to the earth as the son of God on an errand. He came on an errand to handle what? His father's business. I must be, he said, about my father's business. So he wanted to know about this business. Praise God, a business that uh, involved uh, a covenant between, uh, an agreement between uh, the Christ and his father. Amen. He wanted to know more about this uh, uh, agreement which was made before the world was formed before the world was a world. There was an agreement made between God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, praise God, to go on an errand in the earth, praise God, to accomplish a great mission in behalf of the Father, praise God. And this uh, agreement and this covenant, it was ratified or uh, it was fulfilled at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It was made, this covenant, this agreement between God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it was made before the world was the world, but now it was only ratified and fulfilled when Christ arose from the dead and ascended back to the Father. Now, 
Let's look at the book of Romans then. Let me see if I find Romans. Let's look at Romans and Romans 1. Praise God. Romans 1, 3, and 4. And, and you copy this down. Now look with me. Copy it down. Romans 1, 3, and 4. We say that there was a covenant. There was agreement. Hmm? Because you remember what Christ said? Now, I must be about my father's business. Well, that business was about uh, a covenant agreement that he was made between the father and the son. And that was culminated or ratified at the resurrection. Romans 1, 3, and 4 says, uh, Paul says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. Come out of David's lineage. Uh, 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 Christ did. But look at verse 4. And he was declared, talk about Christ now, verse 4, he was declared to be what? The Son of God with power. Mm. He was declared to be the Son of God with power. That's what it says here, according to the spirit of holiness. By what? The resurrection of the dead. He was declared to be the Son of God with power. Hmm? By the resurrection of from the dead. See now, where there is true faith in Christ Jesus, wherever there is true faith in Christ, there are going to be power. There will be power. Hmm? But now, in the majority of our churches today, praise God, in the majority of them, I say the majority, and when I say majority, I mean by 99% of them probably, we only, uh, uh, we only says, uh, Paul, uh, have those who in our churches today, they have a form of godliness. That's what we have in the church today. Paul said that too. They, the church is, is completely inundated, filled with those who have a form of godliness, but they deny the power, that word is again, the power thereof. That's 2 Timothy 3.5. 2 Timothy 3.5. People in the church today, says the Apostle Paul, they have a form. But I want to know him and the power, he says. I want to know the power. But today our churches are filled with those who have a form of godliness, but they uh, emphatically deny the power there. Oh, that's right. That's what we have in the day, in the church today. Now, I mean, talk, when we say the power thereof, we're talking about the power that totally changes. Huh? Jesus changes everything. He changed my life. Huh? This power will change you totally. The way you walk, the way you talk, the way you interact with other people, it changes us. It's a miracle. It's the greatest miracle that one can ever, praise God, experience. Huh? Amen. But now, Christ's resurrection, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection. Now, that's what Paul, is, his desire is in a prison cell here. He desired this uh, uh, because he wants to be able to communicate to the young believers how to live a victorious life in Christ. See, Christ's resurrection from the dead is a sure sign that he is the promised Messiah. He is the one that was promised to come. Hmm? Amen. His resurrection from the dead. Just think now, think for a minute, all of the, uh, of the millions of animals that were sacrificed in the Old Testament as a offering unto God, the lambs, the goats, or whatever was sacrificed, all were just a picture of Christ shedding his blood on the cross. Every last one of them. God used the, the, the slaughter of millions of animals called sacrifices in order to teach us that it was going to be through the shedding of blood that there would be remission of forgiveness of sin. Millions of them. And Christ would be the culmination of all of them would be, as John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God. Here he is. He's the one that takes away the sins of the world. Praise God. But God, to teach us, God allowed millions of animals to be slain, blood to be shed, just to prepare us for the coming of the real Lamb of God. And then the Bible says, He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. Hmm? And they still don't receive him today. And you don't receive him today. Oh, some of us are just not teachable, are we? Hmm? God just had to hit him with a two by four. And still, we don't, don't learn. Praise God. But now, Christ's resurrection is a sure sign that Christ is the promised 
Messiah. And also that the word of God, which was written over, praise God, 1,000, 3,000 years or so, go back there, praise God, concerning him, is, is a sure fact that this word is true. God's word is true. Hmm? 3,000 years of writings and all pointing to the coming of the Messiah and how he would shed his blood and how we, he would right the wrong that our parents, Adam and Eve, had perpetrated upon God. And yet and still he came unto his own and his own received him not. Oh boy. Huh? And today, right now, we're still rejecting him. Oh boy. We're rejecting the Lord today. And uh, But now, uh, 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 to Paul, the resurrection is proof positive. It is the most, the surest evidence that the word he was preaching was sent from heaven. This word that he was preaching, and he was completely adamant about preaching the word of God, as so am I, because I realize that there is no other help for man today except through the word of God, except through you and me accepting God's word. There's no other way, no other help. And Paul saw this as being proof positive, talking about his resurrection now, a proof positive that uh, there was no other way and that this word that we have, this word that God has given us is from heaven for the uh, deliverance of God's people. He came to set the captives free. Captive by what, preacher? Sin. What else? Sin. Sin is, uh, is our uh, captor. Yes, it is. Look at the book of Acts now. Let's go to the book of Acts. And we're going to look at Acts 13. Let's see if we find it here. Acts 13, 32. And I do encourage you, look with me. Get your Bibles out. I wouldn't take a word most of these preachers say today because they ain't preaching no word. They, they may give you one or two scriptures and then they go into the theatrical part of their delivery, the feel-good part. But no, uh, if the feel-good part don't help you, it's the word of God. It's a miracle that's in case in God's word that God releases the power. But we must stay with the word of God. Look at Acts 13. Acts 13, 32, 33, Paul now. Look at Paul preaching at Antioch there in the book of Acts there. And it says here that uh, Paul says again, and we declare. He liked to declare. He said, we declare unto you glad tidings. That's 32, 13, 32. How that the promise which was made unto the fathers God, 33, God hath fulfilled that same promise unto us, their children. How did he do it? In that he hath raised up Jesus Christ again, as it is written in the second Psalm. The second number of Psalms talk about his resurrection. Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Paul quotes the Old Testament. And that's why you can't eliminate Old Testaments because uh, Jesus quoted, Paul quoted, all of them quoted uh, scripture because they're all one. They're all one. Huh? There's no confusion here. The confusion is that you don't understand it. And you don't understand it because uh, God has not opened your understanding. You have not because you ask not. Oh, praise God. That's just the Bible there. Huh? Oh, but now Paul says here that God have fulfilled uh, the promise by raising Christ up from the dead. And uh, David bears witness to that in the second number of Psalm. See, the, the fact, the very fact that Christ was raised up from the dead, the very fact now that Christ was raised up from the dead, it should also encourage every, every one of you, every one of us that are saved, huh? it should encourage us to pro proclaim this word. To proclaim the word of God with boldness, holy boldness, and great confidence. Oh, confidence. Mm. Yes, it should encourage us. The fact that Christ was raised from the dead. Hmm? Praise God. And he has given us power. Peter also, uh, Peter declared, uh, let's see here, that uh, that Christ was raised from the dead. And, uh, and he is not other than, he calls him the prince of life. He called Christ the prince of life. Oh boy, if you don't have Christ, you don't have life. You get your life from the prince. And Christ is the prince of life. Let's look at it then. Go to Acts 3. Acts 3 here now. He called Christ the prince of of life. Acts 3 and 15. Acts 3, 15. Let's look at it there. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Peter speaking now. He's to the church folks of his day. Uh, this is what he said. You killed. Ye 
uh, 315, ye have killed, ye killed, praise God, the prince of life. Y'all killed him. Christ, the prince of life, whom God hath raised up. From the dead, he says, hmm? whereof we are witnesses. Paul said, we're witnesses. Huh? How did they become a witness of Christ being raised from the dead? Well, we all, we're witnesses. If you're a believer, you are witnesses. You are a witness. I am a witness. How am I a witness? In that he has raised us up. Praise God, right? God has raised me up. And if you're a believer, you're a true believer, you have been raised up. Huh? You have been ra raised up from what, Pastor? From the deadness of your sins. What else? Huh? You have you, the things you used to do, you don't do anymore. Ah, praise God. That's the word of God. Huh? Praise God. That sin that had you in bondage and had me in bondage, that sin that would thus easily beset us, the Bible called it. Mm. Had us in bondage. We have been raised up from the deadness of that sin that we were enveloped, encased in. Thank you, Lord. The blood of Jesus Christ, the shed blood on the cross, and the sealing of the deal in his resurrection has set me free. And I thank God for it today. Praise God. I'm rejoicing today. Amen. Remember that uh, uh, Paul made it very plain in 1 Corinthians 15. I think that's what I had on my little board over there. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. Let's find it here. 1 Corinthians 15, Paul made it very plain. Oh, praise God that uh, this gospel that we preach is the key, praise God, to uh, uh, liberty and freedom. And, uh, uh, and, and praise God, preparation for the world to come and the world to come because this one here uh, it's been canceled, y'all. It's been canceled. I'm sorry. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 14. I know you're making plans for this world, but you better listen. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 14 there. Paul says here, if Christ be not risen, if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain. And our faith is in vain. You see how everything hinges on the resurrection? Do you see that now? Huh? He said in verse 15, yea, and we are found false witnesses, he says, of God. Why? Why, why would we be false witnesses of God if the Christ was not raised? Because we have testified. Yes, we testify. We tell people about the goodness of the Lord. But now he was not raised. We have testified of God that he raised up Christ from the dead, whom he raised not up, if there be uh, no resurrection, if so be that the dead rise not up. Praise God. Amen. So that's how crucial, critical, this knowledge of Christ's resurrection is. Praise God, because they enable us, praise God, not to be false witnesses, but to preach the truth. It is the truth. Praise God. Witnesses were they 500 witnesses at one time saw him. Praise God. He, was, he ate food and ate fish and right in their presence. Praise God. He walked through the door without even opening the door. He had that glorified body he had. He could walk right through the door. Praise God. He said, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Not. Huh? See, the point that Paul is emphasizing here uh, to the believers is that if we know the power, have the power, experience the power, Huh? That accompany Christ's resurrection, then then we can we can better fulfill our calling. We all have a calling. Our calling as Christians, many are called, but few are chosen. See, I was called. I wasn't. I didn't volunteer. Huh? I was. I wasn't looking for the Lord. And praise God, <laughs> He found me. The Lord came and He got me. He called me. Praise God. But now. It, to know the power that uh, accompanies Christ's resurrection, uh, if we know it, then we can fulfill our calling. We can, we can, we can walk with boldness here, and and that blessed assurance that we know, that we know, that we know. Hmm? Praise God! See, all through the Bible, the evidence is there. It's threaded throughout the Bible, uh, foretold over thousands of years of Christ's coming. Christ's resurrection, the grave not being able to hold him, how the captives going to be set free through his resurrection. It's all through the Bible. Praise God. Matthew 12, uh, we, we're familiar with it, but let's look at it anyhow while we're here. Go to Matthew 12. What listen at Christ here, what he says here. He go back to the Old Testament again. And again, this is why I, I say to you, 
don't omit, cancel out, cross out the Old Testament. You make a big mistake. They all won. Huh? It's not the not the lack of co continuity of the word of God here. It, it's the lack of your understanding of the word of God. Amen. Matthew 12, 40. Look at Matthew 12, 40. Uh, uh, praise God. Look what the Lord says. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Mm, big fish. So shall the son of man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Christ, praise God. Uh, he goes back, back, way back to Jonah's days there. He said Jonah, spending that three days and three nights in that fish, that big fish belly, was a picture of him in the grave. Three days and three nights. Amen. But now again, again now, Christ rising from the dead is proof positive evidence that he was sent of God. Sent of God, sent by God. Huh? And that the power of God was in him and with him and the power of God was working through him. Proof positive evidence. That should encourage the believer. This is what it's designed to do. This is why Paul is right. He wants these brothers to know that this is the sure word of prophecy here. We can stand on the word of God. You can take it to the bank. Hmm? Praise God, you can take the bank of heaven for sure. And praise God, you can withdraw the power that you need to be a bold witness for the Lord. I thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed. Praise God, because I know that's power. Hallelujah. And I want more of that power. But again, now, now, now Paul desired, again, to know what? And to know the power of his resurrection. But not only that, but to experience it in the short time that he knew that he had to live here on this earth. Hmm? He wanted to know that power because the power, uh, in that power of his resurrection is the power to justify uh, every sinful man in this world here. It justifies us. Hmm? Praise God. But now this justification, which is important now, that we stand before God as justified beings, is predicated, though, upon his resurrection. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, Christ rising from the dead is our discharge from the high court of heaven of the sinners that was upon us. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. See, it's our discharge from the liabilities sin, that is, huh? which the Christ volunteered to undertake on our behalf. He volunteered to come here and take on this great task, oh boy, becoming a liability to pay our sin debt. And he did. Christ couldn't, he, 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 couldn't, he could not have risen. He could not have risen and ascended back to the Father if our sin debt was not paid in full. Hmm? It is finished. Full is what he says. Huh? Praise God. And, 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 and what, 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 what's that sin debt again, Pastor? Now, what was that sin debt? I hear you saying this here. Well, go to Ezekiel then. I'm going to show you what the sin debt is according to the word of God. Amen. We know what it is. But now Ezekiel 18 and 4. What is that sin debt? Pastor, you write these down now. Praise God. What is the sin debt that that God that we owed to God for our disobedience? Hmm? Oh boy. The sin debt. Look at verse 4. Ezekiel 18, 4. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine, said the Lord. Huh? And here's the penalty. Here, here it is the debt. The soul that's in it, it shall die. Hmm. Die. Can you believe that God never intended for us to die? No, he, that wasn't in God's plan. Oh, the enemy did that. God didn't do that. God wanted, God made us in his image to live forever. Huh? But the soul that sinned, it shall die. That was the, the, the that was the, the, the penalty, uh, that was the charge against us. You must die. Huh? Go on down to verse 20 of that same 18, Ezekiel 18. Move on down to 20. And, and it begins that verse with what? These words here. The soul that sent it, it shall die. He says it twice in that uh, one chapter. The soul that death 
eternal death in hell is the penalty for man's disobedience. Hmm? Praise God. A sinless life. How do you fix a problem like that, Pastor? Well, a sinless life must be taken for, uh, for the sin that man has committed. That's the only way you fix that. Someone that was sinless, you couldn't do it, I couldn't do it. Huh? Nobody could do it. That was every one of us, our blood is tainted with sin, even to this day. But it needed a man. A man, hallelujah, I'm talking about a God man, a God man had to come. A sinless life had to be taken in order that man uh, might be exonerated. See, and, and that, that man, praise God, Christ himself, Christ our substitute. He became our substitute. Christ became our sacrifice. Hmm? Praise God, the perfect man. He came into this world a perfect man. And for 33 years, he remained a perfect man. Can you imagine that? Hmm? A perfect man. He came to this earth here through a virgin named Mary. Yes, he did. Planting himself. Huh? God put himself in a, a virgin's womb. Never had a man. Never touched a man. But God planted himself a perfect man. Huh? How in the world, Pastor, can Jesus be perfect and then Mary? She wasn't perfect, was he? Well, his daddy was, though. Ah, watch out, man. You see how important you are, man? You see how important you are? The father, his father, not Joseph now. Joseph was not his biological father. The Lord, father. The Lord was his father. Amen. Praise God. But through the Virgin Mary, he offered himself as a living sacrifice, the Bible says, to bring honor and dignity back to God's word. We took it away when we disobeyed. We took the dignity out of God's word, away from God's word when we disobeyed. But Christ came to live a perfect life, huh? to perfectly obey the word, to bring honor and dignity back to the word of the father. And also what? To die. You know, the soul that's in it, he's got to die. So not only was he charged with bringing dignity back to the word of God, he was charged also with death. He had to die the death that was due to all mankind, to you and to me. He had to die. He had to die, and he did. He died. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He died. He was buried, and he was held hostage. Uh, he allowed himself to be held hostage and captive uh, in that grave, in that tomb for three days and three nights, held there by the word of God, by the law of God. The man that sinned, that soul that sinned, it shall die. And he was being held there, praise God, for three days and three nights until the angel of God ascended, or descended, that is, from heaven, rolled back the stone from that tomb. Hmm? Praise God. And he set the hostage free. He set the Lord free. Then the Lord rose and ascended back to heaven. Praise God. Having fulfilled hmm? his covenant obligations. Yes, he did. He fulfilled all the obligations. And he was heard to have said, praise God, on the cross. Even on the cross. It is finished. It's done. Done deal. Praise God. Man has been uh, put in a position of restoration, if he so desire to be restored, if you want to be, if you want to be, hmm? Christ paid the sin debt that we owed. Yes, he paid the sin debt. Christ did, and the receipt. You know, when you go get something at the store, you get a receipt, don't you? Usually, we get a receipt. They get the evidence that we purchased it. Well, what was Christ's receipt for paying our sin debt? Huh? Well, his receipt was that he was set free, and he rose from the grave. Proof positive that he had purchased our salvation. He has, it belongs to him, praise God. He has set the captives free. Hmm? Proof positive, amen. We've been set free, praise God, from the uh, the prison house of our sins and death. And death, the eternal death that we were headed to, I was headed to, but now I'm headed to heaven now. Hmm? Praise God, the moment I depart this life, I'm going straight to be with my father. Praise God, because I've been set free. Hallelujah, by the power of God. And I'm thankful, amen. I'm thankful for it, praise God. And all who believe in him, if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, 
Hmm? Oh, they believe in him. You are in him. You are in Christ. If you believe in Christ, you are in Christ and you are set free. Yes, right now. If you believe, you're set free from the bondage of sin and death. Just as he was. huh? Just as he is today. Right this very moment, he sits at the right hand of God, making intercession for me and for you. Praise God. The Bible says he, Christ died for our sins and he rose for our justification. Mm, Romans what? 4.25, that is. That's Romans 4.25. And that it says also in Romans 3, I think 20, 26, write down anyway, 3.26, that he's the justifier. He is the justifier of him who believe it. Mm. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. I'm just happy to be saved today. Man, man. can you believe after 51 years or 52 years or whatever it is there, I've been saved. I'm be saved. I ain't, I ain't talking about going to church now. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to let you get away with that. Uh, a lot of you go to church, but I, are you saved though? Have you really trusted in the Lord? But after 51 years uh, of, of, of being saved, uh, it just tickled my fancy. It just, oh, praise God. It just gives me uh, a hallelujah fit. Amen. But now it is through the work of Christ though, that God, he's just, and he is the justifier of him who believes. Yes, he is. Amen. Just as the rising of the sun, praise God, rising up, uh, it removes all darkness. Don't it? When the sun go up, the darkness goes out. Am I right about that? Well, it's the same way with the resurrection. The resurrection of Christ removes all of our darkness. If he rises up in you, if the sun, the S-O-N, sun, or the bright and the morning star, if he rises up in you, darkness going to have to go. There's no day way it can stay. You can't live if any man be in Christ. He's a new creature. Old things pass away. Behold, all things what? It becomes new. It removes all sin. The scripture says that in Christ, we are justified from all things. We are justified from all things. That's what the Bible says. Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. If you have been, but now if you have trusted in Christ though, if you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ today, hmm, then you are at this very moment in the sight of the Lord, you're justified. You are justified. You're righteous. Mm. As if you have perfectly, you yourself has perfectly obeyed the word of God. Well, you didn't do it. Christ did it, though. This is my beloved son in whom I well pleased. The father said, this is him. Mm. Get your focus off him. the others, that preacher, that preacher. Get your focus on Christ because he's the only one. This is my beloved son in whom I am what? I'm well pleased. Never committed a sin on God's word. huh? Praise God. How can that be? How can that be? Well, because Christ, praise God, he accomplished all of this through his resurrection, through his death, his burial, his resurrection from the grave. He was delivered from the grave. And therefore, praise God, every true Every true born again believer will have been delivered from the judgment that is to come. Our debt, our sin debt, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It's paid in full, in full. Yes, Romans 5, 1, praise God, said, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace. Mm, do you have that peace today? Do you? Are you a recipient mm, of this peace today? Mm, do you have it? I'm talking about peace in the midst of your storms. Peace that the world didn't give you and the world can't take from you. Do you have that today? Huh? Oh, he's not being justified by faith. Oh, Paul says in Romans 5, 1, we are peace with God. Through our crisis resurrection is what he says here. Mm, do you have it? But now, praise God, believe me, brother and sister, believe me. In the days, in the years to come, you're going to need this peace. You're going to need it. Amen. You're going to need this peace. Don't it? You're going to need it. Huh? Praise God. And it will, praise God, also help us to know. Praise God. It's going to help us to know that through Christ's resurrection, 
Praise God, as we get ready to close here now. Uh, but we're going to do a part three on this. I'm, I, I just need to, I need to milk this a little bit more. This resurrection, I got, I, I got to milk it a little bit more. But now, uh, it's going to help us to know that through Christ's resurrection, he has made us accepted in the beloved. That's what the, Ephesians 1, 6 says. We have been made accepted in the beloved. And I love that word. I love that word accepted. See, that means a lot to those of us who felt at one time in our lives, as a young boy myself, huh? many people know my story, huh? no mother, no father, not biological, but, you know, like I was maybe, uh, people that loved me, now don't get me wrong, my people, did, they, they did love me, but uh, my mother wasn't there, not all the time, no, she wasn't there, my father wasn't there, period, and, uh, but now you feel a little bit like you're not accepted, you know, you 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 put on a good face, but deep down inside. But I love this word accepted. Hmm? It, if it seems that no one else wants you or accept you, know this. Praise God. Christ will accept you if you'll only put your trust in him. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. You know, I got saved around 23 years old. So in that neighborhood, oh, I wish I would have got saved long before that, though. Oh boy, it'll save me a lot of misery, a lot of errors that I made trying to be accepted. Hmm? Praise God. But if we trust in the Lord, huh? See, acceptance is in the power of his resurrection. Oh, that's why Paul said, I want to know more about this. Because the acceptance is there. And knowing this brings joy to my heart. It does. Joy and speakable. Hallelujah. And full of glory, full of glory. Just to know that uh, by my faith in Christ's resurrection, I have received a full pardon for my sins. I have. I have been justified. Full justification and, and, and a guarantee of a full acceptance into the family of God. I'm a part of a heavenly family. Can you imagine I got what they got. Oh, I got it. Oh, ain't you glad about it? I, I, I got it. I got it. I don't, I don't have no religion now. I don't have that foolishness. That's foolishness. We talk about salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But I'm so thankful today. Huh? I'm thankful that the Lord has saved me and placed his Holy Spirit within me. I'm thankful the Lord has totally changed my life today. Huh? I'm glad about it. I'm just elated after these 51, 52 years of, praise God, I, being saved, I can still, I still have joy. I still have joy. And I rejoice each and every day. And I'm so thankful to the Lord. So now, as I close, now remember this now, God is no respect of person. The God we serve is no respect of person. What he has done for me and millions of others, he wants to do it for you. Yes. You don't have no peace, don't have no joy. He wanted it for you. Huh? If you in all sincerity would just what? Repent of your sins. Repent of your sins. Huh? Accept the Lord's forgiveness. Hmm? Then receive his Holy Spirit into your hearts and by your head and your heart. Praise God and say, Lord, I, 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 forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, I have sinned. If you be honest with the Lord, he says, when you seek me with all your heart, then you're going to find me. And bingo, I'm telling you, it happened to me. It happened to me. Mm, I sought him with all my heart. And praise God, I shammed it for a long time. I'm not going to do this no more, Lord. Lord, help me, Lord. This is Lord, help me. This. And But now, one day, <coughs> excuse me, one day, it came from my heart. And that day, the power of his resurrection was released inside of me. And God will do it for you. He'll do it for you right now. If you bow your heads in all sincerity, ask God <coughs> into your heart. Excuse me again. Let us pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I praise you. I bless you. I thank you, Lord, for this time. Hallelujah for your salvation today, Lord. I pray that my uh, brothers, my sisters, Lord, might uh, hear this word today, and Lord, and receive from you, Father, this great resurrection power that brings so many benefits. And Lord, we'd be so mindful to give you all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray, 
Amen. Now, if you received this word from the Lord today, I'm going to ask you to do something here. Not money. It ain't got about no money. Uh, my father's rich. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't beg nobody. I wouldn't ask you. And I won't either. Huh? Praise God. I just want you to pray for me. Pray for me that, uh, praise God, that the power of God will be revealed to me more fully as I seek to do what Paul sought to do. And that was to strengthen and to grow the church, to grow the believer. You pray for me, okay? And then share this word. If you have any means, this is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you share this word, if you, my sheep know my voice. Now, if you think this was God's voice speaking through me, share this word. Share this word. Share this word. Hmm? And if it's going to help us, hit the like button over there. Because hmm? now we depend on God. Praise God. God going God to put this word where he wants it to be. Huh? Then subscribe, though. Subscribe. And when I come again, praise God, on Sunday. On Sunday, God's will. I say God's will. I'll come back Sunday. And I'll bring you that third part. We'll look deeper into the power of his resurrection. But until that time, may God bless you. May God keep you, is my prayer today. Amen. Thank you, Lord.